This is Twit. My new book, Medallion Status, is an, an, another book like my previous one, Vacation Land, of uh, extremely funny, often profound, sometimes heart heartbreaking mm -hmm. essays by me, John Hodgman, true stories. In this case, about what it's like to be a famous minor television personality and all of the secret rooms and exclusive clubs and first class lounges that even the minorist of fame admits you to. And then what it feels like to be kicked out of those rooms one by one until you're me. <laughs> Not even as famous as the least famous dog on Instagram. Darn but it. you're referring specifically to the, uh, the medallion status literally is a literal reference to uh, a, a, an airline loyalty program where you earn – different medallions the more and more you travel. These are not actual medallions. Don't get a prize. They're an imaginary prize, starting with silver medallion, which I do not talk about because it's a garbage medallion. And then you get <laughs> up to gold medallion, platinum medallion, and beyond. And uh, and I don't name the airline in the book because I don't get any money from them. There's no co-branding co here. But I'll tell you it's Delta, right? And so in the Delta Sky Clubs, I, I talk a lot about the strange exp the strange mix of sort of a a a actual kind of luxury in the Delta Sky Clubs and then the mundanity of the Delta Sky Clubs. Mm -hmm. But one thing they get right, and I'm going to say this, and it really amazes me every time. Though in the morning, hard-boiled eggs, they do them correctly. They do not have, never have I ever had a hard-boiled egg in a Delta Sky Club that has that green ring around the yolk, uh -huh. which is, that's, it, it takes, it, you, you know, how, you know how to avoid that, right? Mike, no, I don't know if you enjoy No, tell me egg. the secret. I, I do like hard boiled oh. eggs, but I don't know how to avoid yeah. the green ring. In one of my many, many past lives and careers, I used to write about food and wine and cheese, which is a kind of food for various men's magazines. And I learned like, you have to, you hard boil the egg and then you immediately put it into an ice bath. And if you don't chill it, then, then that green ring will will uh, will ox it's an oxidization issue. Okay. That green ring. So I, I'm just saying the Sky Club is doing it right. They don't do everything right, but they're definitely avoiding that green ring. And as I say in the book, I can't help but take a picture, a, a congratulatory picture, <laughs> every time I have a hard boiled egg in a Sky Club. And that is why my Instagram account is so uh, repulsive <laughs> a lot of the time. Just full of eggs. <laughs> Just full of hard-boiled eggs. It's disgusting. But, but there are other things, too. A lot more dogs lately because, as I say, I'm, tr I'm trying to get in with the Instagram dogs. That's where it's at now. That's where entertainment is. Yeah, that, I mean, that seems to be the, the case. And, in fact, one of the things that you discussed in the book is y you talk about you know being on television and how television kind of isn't on television anymore. And we've right. we've moved on to new forms of, of media. Um, and what I'm curious, just in general, sort of what has that been like for you watching the, the change from everybody gathering around the television to watch a show and people talking about in, you know the latest series on ABC versus now you've got bingeable content on Netflix and now we're talking right. about adding like double speed to Netflix shows so you can get them in yeah. even quicker it's kind of yeah. wild yeah I mean you know uh, it, it's it's funny how television used to be demonized in our culture mm -hmm. and now we look back at it as like the golden age of radio when the family would gather around and and listen to a story together and have something to share and talk about. You know, I should never have been on television. I always started it as a writer. If you look at me, my on-camera uh, career is, frankly, um, implausible. But I got kidnapped by television by Jon Stewart uh, when I was promoting a book of humor, uh, you know, now 15 years ago. Uh, we had a good time on the show, and he, and he invited me back to be the resident expert on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. And that gave me a very sort of fly on the wall perspective of how TV works and how celebrity works and uh, and and especially during a, a period of change, because back then in 2006, television was on television. Mm -hmm. Right there. Mm -hmm. I remember the day that someone from Comedy Central came into the the room that we would go into to do the postmortem after a show and showed us long, before the iPhone an iPod with the daily show playing on it and everyone in the room going, that'll never work. No one will ever watch a TV show on a device like that. <laughs> and then the iPhone came along and I was with the, I was at the daily show when they brought me to the Emmys, I think in 2008 where the, uh, where the big move was the Emmys was finally acknowledging reality shows a, a, as part of the primetime Emmys. And then it became more and more inclusive. And I was there the first time a Netflix show was nominated wow. and just wondering what's happening. And by the time 
by the time I went to the Emmys for the last time in 2015 with John Stewart for you know, not it wasn't just him and me I wasn't his date it was the whole the whole <laughs> cast. <laughs> John Stewart said come with me to the Emmys you'll be my date. But you know 2015 was the year that he handed the show over to Trevor Noah where it thrives today mm. and it was also the last year the Daily Show with John Stewart was uh, was, uh, you know, uh, 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 nominated for, for the Emmy and they, and they won and the, and the contrast, and I write about it in the book, the contrast between going to the Emmys in 2008 and going to the Emmys in 2015 was dramatic because, you know, when a show like lost was nominated, it got this massive round of applause just for being mentioned. Do you know what I mean? Not because you necessarily wanted it to win, but everyone knew what that show was. Everyone knew right. what was on television. And all of a sudden, here are these nominees for shows that no one had ever heard of because they're not coming out on tele. They're not coming out on, you know, five to a hundred channels of television, but another one hundred to infinity channels of streaming, tablets, social media, or whatever, you know. And so it's like, here's a nomination for the the coach Friday Night Lights, who was on a show that no one saw except for five people, but he did a good job, and you would hear clapping way up in the balcony <laughs> for the f five people who'd seen it. You know, here's the Here's a show. Here's the show about uh, women's prison, uh, starring the woman who's really talented. We never mentioned that she starred in Atlas Shrugged anymore because she's she's a good actor. Uh, and we don't. And last year it was nominated as a comedy, and this year it's nominated as a drama to, dra uh, drama because we don't know what entertainment is anymore. And it's like <laughs> you know, clap, 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 clap. Right. And I, you know, the thing that really struck me was you know just a few years after the Emmys deigned to include reality, unscripted television. In their telecast now, 2015, I'm walking to my seat, and um, I'm walking in, in front of the front row where all the most famous people in the in the world sit, mm -hmm. and I'm really kind of surprised that the Daily Show this year is like way house left out in Siberia, like really far away from the stage. John got a good seat, but we were all way out there, and as I'm walking, I hear these two friendly voices, I go, "Hey, John! Hey, John!" And I turn to my left and seated front. Not front, first row, but like third row center, prime seats, were the Property Brothers, Jonathan Scott what? and Drew Scott. Yeah, and the Prop Bros, if you don't know, are these two uh, these two uh, identical, handsome, identical twins from Canada, who have a big show on HGTV that I happened to watch a few times and thought was fun, but considered it real niche culture. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And I did not expect them to see them sitting third row center at the Emmys. Especially since I knew – we had gotten to know each other on Twitter a little bit. Ha, uh, at Hodgman is my, uh, is my handle on Twitter. Always be plugging. <laughs> I, I knew them a little bit. That's why they said hello. And I was like, that's nice that the Property Brothers are saying hello. But why are they there? You know, like, <laughs> right. What, I'm confused. They, they, I, their, their, their category had come up the week before in the Creative Arts Emmys, which is like the Junior Prom Emmys where they, they shunt a lot of – smaller technical awards and the writing awards and certain awards go there. And they hadn't even won their category. I knew this. <laughs> so I'm like, why, why are you guys there? They're like, you're here for the daily show, right? I'm like, yeah, why are you guys here? And they said, you just oh, wanted us. They didn't know why like, they were there in that spot. They didn't. They, I thought maybe they might be presenting an award. They're like, nope, they just invited us here. And this is where they sat. I mean, they're the nicest guys in the right, world. Right, right, right. And so I said, well, I'll see you later. And I, and I walked back to my seat. It took me about two weeks to get there. Right. There was a huge mountains like, in the oh, way. Yeah. yeah, this is, this is enter entertainment moves on. You know, the Daily Show, the, the liberal conscience of cable television for, tw you know, 20 years with Jon Stewart at the helm is coming to an end. Mm -hmm. But front and center are those property brothers. And at the party afterward, I mean, I had no idea how, how popular these property brothers were and and at one point uh uh jonathan scott came over and said hi to me and took a took a selfie with me mm -hmm. and all of a sudden i was incredible hot property uh -huh. there and i was the hot property like everyone's like can you introduce me to them like <laughs> oh you oh you, you know, know like, them do you oh yeah tina fey's <laughs> getting a selfie with them and Kristen shawl's getting a selfie with them and i john ham is making out with both of them for of a course, while that's right just, that's just a joke but he could do it if he wanted <laughs> Yes, he could. That'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that that is quite the change there. And look, here we are. Here we are. You know, talking on an independent media uh, empire mm -hmm. that's been that's been going strong now for a number of years. And you know, I, I think back to the first time that I would that I would listen to this week in tech um, when I learned about Twitter. Do you know what I mean? Right. And, and look, 
look, you know, and, and that was during a time when Twitter was not just, you know, pure dispiriting poison that you poured into your eyes at 3 a.m. It was actually a fun community where you could talk to people and meet people and stuff. Yeah, it was a and nice now look, And now look where we are. Now it is a, a, a royal mess. It is the green oxidization around a delicious hard-boiled egg. It is the thing that ruins the hard-boiled egg at this point. I'm, I might just have to walk away. You pulled that together so well. <laughs> wow, Micah. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What a, what a, what a, what a, what a, uh, Callback. <laughs>